Okay, um, hi all. So uh, I'll be going through this uh, presentation of seamless and automated integration with Ansible. And uh, my name is Sumat. And a bit about me is uh, currently I'm working as a principal software engineer at Red Hat. And under Ansible team, I'm working with Ansible security and the wisdom engineering team. And uh, you can find me on GitHub at uh, my IDS is just us and our Twitter is just Sumit. So first thing first, uh, I'll just give you a brief introduction about Ansible because uh, as it's an Ansible day and uh, this uh, all the topic would be around Ansible, so most of you would be listening about Ansible again and again. So I'll just run through the Ansible introduction part. I'll quickly uh, talk about Ansible modules because most of you might know of Ansible modules, but there is a, a from past two three years we have started exploring Ansible resource modules as well. So basically, I'll go through a brief about module versus Ansible resource module, and then I'll start talking about the crux of this, uh, basically the presentation, which is Ansible Content Builder and Ansible Open API based scaffolding tool. And then if everything goes good, probably I'll be able to demo. So yeah, let's go with it. So yeah, what's Ansible? Uh, and what sets Ansible apart? You might have seen this n number of times now, because uh, as Greg had already told, it's uh, from 11 years. So it's a simple automation language and an automation engine um, that runs the Ansible playbook, and it actually helps in providing automation for everyone. So why Ansible is, uh, like, what sets Ansible apart is uh, because it is simple, it is powerful and agentless, why it is simple uh, is because of all these bullet points, like it is basically a human readable information, no specific, uh, special coding skills is needed. And uh, you use Playbook to automate stuff, so task, uh, in your Playbook you design under tasks, so tasks are executed in order. And basically every team can use it, so which helps all the team to get productive faster. Okay? So why it is powerful? Because it can be used anywhere and everywhere. So first is app deployment. It can help you with configuration management, your workflow orchestration. It can help to configure network security, clouds, and more. So it can basically orchestrate the entire app lifecycle. And the like the other pillar of Ansible is it's be, it being agentless. So you need not to install any agent on your remote machine. So it's agent class architecture in that scenario. And it uses OpenSSH, HTTP API, and WinRM to basically configure things. And as I said, no agents are required to uh, exploit or update. And you can get started with it uh, like quickly. Uh, so that makes Ansible more efficient and more secure. So yeah, uh, another thing that I wanted to discuss with you very briefly is Ansible module versus Ansible resource module. So most of you might already know what is Ansible modules, right? And if you might have used network or security content in that regards, you might have come across Ansible resource module as well, right? So um, anybody have used Ansible resource module? No, not yet? Uh, anybody is using networking or security content with Ansible? OK. Uh, B. So uh, you can uh, see the table, right? Uh, so Ansible module is basically use case focused, wherein your Ansible resource module is resource and API focused. What it means is like, uh, okay, um, in the presentation and the demo also, I'll briefly discuss, briefly touch on this topic. Yeah, let's go more, uh, forward. So uh, you might have seen Ansible in the states format, right? So Ansible, whatever module you use, you'll have state present and absent. But in case of resource module, we have uh, included additional states like merged, replaced, override, deleted, gathered, and rendered. You can understand this in format of like uh, you have REST APIs, right? So it will be more. Uh, it can it can give you more context around that. Like you have post call, put call, delete call. So you can uh, like as I told you uh, in the demo, I'll briefly touch on this uh, because uh, uh, it's a topic of its own. So if I'll uh, start discussing all these states, it will deviate from the topic of discussion. So um, yeah, so uh, it gives you more flexibility as it's uh, with Ansible module. You, you have you just have present and absent, right? So either you can go ahead and make a configuration on the device, and you can go ahead and delete it. But with Ansible resource module, you have the flexibility of uh, basically with the present state, it ha uh, you have. Uh, merge, replace, and override, where in these three states will be used in different scenarios. 
and your delete would like a delete would be uh, like equivalent to your absent state. Why gathered and rendered is basically gathered is basically the facts collection, and rendered is like if you want to just see the output like the check mode part of Ansible if you have heard of it. So uh, it will basically act like a check mode part. So wherein you just fire the playbook and it will give you a result that okay this is the configuration command that is gonna fire and that's how your result will be uh, at the end. So yeah, I've given the example like built-in modules like Ansible, Copy, URI and many other built-in modules are there and um, currently Ansible resource module you'll be able to find more from networking and security side of things because it's like from past three years we, st we start exploring this and more of Ansible, uh, more of Ansible content is going to like uh, is starting to adopt this scenario because it's a uh, uh, method of choice basically. So yeah, uh, now we will discuss about the Ansible content builder. So uh, I just saw in the previous uh, presentation, Greg was talking about the adoption part of it, right? Because most of us uh, think that with Ansible, if you are going to collect like uh, uh, create a content. So you'd have to uh, invest more of your time uh, in like, uh, because bootstrapping basically a content collection is a time taking process, right? Because uh, if you are going to start from a collection, you'll have to uh, start exploring the documents part of Ansible and you'll have to know that, okay, this is how you create a collection and uh, you'll have to take care of, or you during the way of your content creation part, basically you'll have to uh, consult with Ansible team and everyone so that you can um, basically uh, get your connection done with it. And um, so yeah, uh, multiple module creation used of, based on use case and API is a resource heavy task. And create, uh, basically I would add, uh, creators have to follow and implement Ansible best coding practices because otherwise if you go and uh, come to Ansible team for like a certification of your collection, they'll come back saying that, okay, you have not followed this as a best practice is what is being expected from Ansible con uh, collection. So overall, it's basically a time-taking process. So that's how, uh, so these feedback from the community get to uh, explore this idea of Ansible Content Builder. Okay, so how Content Builder is uh, like, intends to solve all these problems is like, uh, it helps you generate the content collection automatically. Like, uh, being case of currently, this is being more prominently used from the network security and cloud side. But yeah, with time, it will be adopted more. So uh, it will help in overall content collection with required files and folder automatically generated because uh, once you give the, uh, like, uh, if you run this particular tool, so you'll have a basic folder and files structured in the way uh, content is being, like, content collection gets created. So yeah, it helps you to create a working resource module out of the box. And uh, as I said, uh, since we have written it, so we have taken care of all the best practices and everything, uh, what is needed and what is intended, intended from a new content creation uh, creators. So the only time that you require uh, in setting this up is that running the scaffolding tool with your customization, bit of customization is great. So yeah, so I'll be diving more on this open API based scaffolding for our Ansible resource module. Um, is because this is the main, uh, like uh, core of uh, my discussion. So open API based, uh, have you heard of open API? Okay. So you guys know, right? Uh, open API is in a standard how JSON is uh, JSON file is designed and basically it follows the open API standard so that your JSON looks in a way where uh, uh, it's, a, it's a standard so all, everybody has to follow it, right? So based on that particular open API standard, we have designed a tool, like we have designed a logic wherein you give me that in input as your Swagger open, open API based Swagger JSON file and the API that you want to build a module for. So basically that uh, will be the input and few other resources as well. And with this particular tool, you can create a working module, a working resource mo module just by running the tool. And the generated module would be around 90% functional. And uh, yeah, there is space for customization based uh, on your need and as intended by your organizations or like any community developer. So uh, as I said, currently the tool is more optimized from the security side and the cloud vendor side because most of the use cases where, where an, uh, REST API comes into picture is like security vendors or the cloud vendors, right? So uh, 
So this tool, what I'm going to demo also would be uh, demoing the, I'll be demoing the Trend Micro Deep, uh, deep Security. Uh, have, you might, have you heard of Trend Micro as an endpoint security solution? Right, right. So um, yeah, so I'll be taking the Trend Micro uh, Deep Security Swagger JSON file, which is open API based, and I'll generate uh, basically the resource module against a particular API. So yeah, we have come to a demo point. If things work, I should be able to demo all the required stuff and get you all guys wowed. OK. OK, before this. Okay, so basically this, uh, okay. Are you able to see the screen or should I increase the font? Is good? Okay, so basically this will be the input what I'll get from uh, anybody who wants to use this particular uh, tool. So as you can see here, collection I'm trying to target is um, Trend Micro Deep Security, wherein I have given the namespace Trend Micro and uh, name of the collection is Deep Security. So path is where I want the uh, build, uh, so where I'll run the tool and my output would get uh, stored. And basically the plugins would be the thing, what input I'll get, what input I'm expecting, and what input this uh, tool basically expects from the user. So type is module open API because Ansible Content Builder is one big, uh, uh, big uh, content, build, uh, content builder collection where module open API is one part of it, right? Which actually takes care of uh, scaffolding your uh, module resource module based out of uh, your open API based uh, Swagger JSON file. So module API, uh, module open API is the open API is the type and name I have given. I am so as you see in this part. Basically, I, in the API object path, I am trying to target the intrusion prevention rule API from the swag. I can show you the Swagger JSON file as well. Just hold on. So basically, this is the Swagger JSON file of a Trend Micro Deep Security, and this is designed using the Open API standards. So just let me find. Okay, what I'm doing. <laughs> Something is wrong. I'm not able to search it. Anyways, uh, you just got the context, right? So uh, there is an API that is written over there and I'll be targeting the post part of it. So this is a REST API document from Trend Micro Deep Security, wherein I am targeting intrusion prevention rule API and I'll be targeting the intrusion prevention rule post uh, call, uh, like post parameters of it because I want to design a module for the, for the uh, Trend Micro Deep Security configuration, right? Yeah, so uh, as you can see, the API object path is where I'll uh, give the API uh, information. And the name is deep, uh, DeepSec Intrusion Prevention Rule as module name. And my API return is the API return that it, uh, like your Swagger JSON file will have the information of this. So you'll give the API return as well. And then resource key is how, uh, because Ansible converts, it, it doesn't follow the camel casing, right? So it uh, basically follows the underscore case. So resource I'll be doing as intrusion prevention rule, the author and unique key is not uh, uh, required in this context, but it would be required in other contexts. You might go through uh, the GitHub or content builder collection and you'll get to know that where exactly unique key is required. Basically it is required for checkpoint collection, I believe. Okay. So yeah, so I'll be using deep security instance uh, before, uh, let's go through the uh, module creation part of it. So this is my Ansible builder where if I show, 
I have the Ansible Content Builder collection, my uh, build.yaml, as a builder you can ignore, and manifest file. If I show the manifest file, this would be the same input file that I just shown. And my build would just have the name of the Content Builder collection. So if I run this, ideally I should get uh, uh, the entire collection with the action file and the module file for this particular API. So yeah, so as this is running, it'll go on, create the entire content collection directory basically. So if you have seen how content collection uh, directory is there, it'll have module file, module util file, it'll have your, uh, uh, inside your plugin file, it'll have all the action files. So all those skeleton would get ready for it. But at this point, with this particular API, since we are using the open API based uh, scaffolding logic, so I'll be more concerned with the action logic file that it generates and the module file that basically it generates. So if I go, so this is the path where the output gets stored because I had mentioned it in manifest ML. Okay. So as you see, uh, it has created all these directory so this uh, logic is part of your bigger content builder. But since I am using the module open API part of it, so I am here, I'll be more f uh, concerned with the plugins that it has generated for me. So if you can see under action, I have a DeepSec intrusion prevention uh, Python file, which is actually the heart, heart of it. And uh, I have a module file. So basically this has, uh, show you. So this has all the documentation part of it. And this entire documentation part is being fetched from your uh, uh, Swagger API JSON file, what I just used uh, for, from the Trend Micro site. Okay? So, yeah, so this entire document is being fetched, being fetched from it. So as you can see, the example part is null because um, these are the uh, nits and bits, you'll have to take care of it. So example you need to mention uh, because uh, uh, your Swagger file doesn't have the example, right? So you'll have to uh, take care of the example part. And then coming back to your action file. So this is the action logic which actually goes on and uh, configure the actual uh, config items on the uh, Trend Micro instance, basically. So if I just, so I have my collection here. So if you see, I have a Trend Micro Deep Security collection already. I'll just go ahead and copy both the module files and the action logic file in the corresponding folders. So if I go to action, I'll just go ahead and copy this action file, paste it back. Okay, where is it? Okay, it's going to build it. So if you can see, uh, okay, it's, what's the name of it? Okay, I can delete it. I can delete the existing module file as well because I don't want that. So yeah, as I have copied uh, the action file, I'll just go ahead and paste it and uh, I'll fetch the module file as well because that's the uh, module file that is needed from the coding as well. Okay, copy and paste it to a module folder. Right? You can see underscore one because that was the existing uh, file. So now my everything seems to be in place. And if I have, uh, okay, let me before firing the operation, I can just log into my instance. Okay, so you can see, uh, so I try to configure a test IPR1 and test IPR2, two rules basically. So as you can see currently, those two rules are not configured under your intrusion prevention rules. So let me just fire. Okay. So if I show you the playbook before. Okay, I can show you here itself. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, as I told you guys that uh, I'll be briefly touching about the states that is being uh, exposed from the resource module side is merged, replaced, override, and deleted and gathered and rendered. But in security case, uh, override would not make sense because uh, most of the security rules are already built in from by the vendor itself. And if you want to add on uh, to uh, those rules, you cannot override the entire rule base that is being uh, given by your vendors. So in that scenario, so I'll uh, secure it with respect to security content. Oh, okay, okay. So let me just uh, fire this. I am running out of time, so let me just fire the operation. run this without a tag. I'll just comment all this section out so that I can just make you guys see. So yeah, so what it does is like whatever module I have just generated, it will go ahead and use that particular module and try to configure on the device uh, that I just shown. So you can see, right, so merge state went ahead and tried to configure uh, intrusion prevention rule. If you can see, it uh, basically shows in before and after format. So if you can see those two rules that I just tried to apply on the device, before is coming as an empty list, and once the uh, configuration got applied, it is showing your after as test API 1 and test API 2. And if I go ahead and verify on the device, it should be configured now. Okay. So you can see, right? Test IPR one got configured, and similar way, uh, test IPR two would get also would also get so uh, configured. So I would highly encourage you guys to go and uh, study a bit about resource module. Yes. as I told you, it's been almost three years, and it's more in advanced stage. So most of the blog post and Ansible doc would have enough information around the Ansible resource module. Okay, we are almost done with our. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was it. So uh, you, uh, you guys being the community, we all get all the feedback from you guys and based on that, we for the uh, adoption, we started to build work and we start to build on this particular tool. So yeah, it would, it would be of great help to keep giving us your valuable feedback. And yeah, that is it. Thank you.